Okay, so we're going to move on and kind of think about why we've been doing all these awful equations. Now, we're going to talk about something called a half cell, and that's going to link into electro potentials. So I've got here a beaker, right, a bit of copper, and I've got some copper sulfate solution. So I am going to pop in the copper sulfate solution in to the beaker. Ooh, okay, exciting stuff. Now, what is actually happening in my beaker? I have got copper sulfate solution, but the main thing is I've got copper, copper two plus ions, and I've got in there a lump of copper. This, rather excitingly, although you probably won't appreciate it at the moment, is called a half cell. Now to think about what's actually going on, we're gonna, you have to draw these, and we'll draw a few in a minute. What's actually going on in that beaker? So keep that in your mind. Well, we have, if I draw it, I'll go for blue. blue. I have, uh, don't worry about drawing this, that's okay, because we're drawing it there. I've got copper metal, and in there I've got copper two plus aqueous. And it's actually one mole per decimeter cubed. We always use one mole per decimeter cubed. And that's copper metal solid. Well, you may not believe me, but we've actually set up an equilibrium. And the equilibrium is copper two plus aqueous plus two electrons is in equilibrium with copper solid. From now on, we're gonna write them these, because I know we previously we've kind of like been a little bit naughty. We've kind of put electrons on this side and this side, depending on the mood that we're in. What we're going to try and move to now is we would always write these with the electrons on the left hand side. So whenever you have to, is we did is you put the most oxidized on the left hand side. You will always add in electrons. Okay. So you always add an electron. So we will always have electrons on the left hand side. What's going on? Well, okay. So here I've got little copper atoms. Yeah. Little copper guys. And then in solution I've got little copper two plus guys. What can happen is my little copper atom go, hey, I'm going to join my buds in solution. So he goes off to form copper two plus. If he goes off to form copper, what must be left behind on my copper. Two electrons. Yeah, two electrons. So what's going to happen to here? What? Is it charge? This is going to build up charge. So if that's the case, if they're all popping off, so they're all popping off, this will build up a negative charge. As the negative charge builds up, what's going to happen to my copper two plus guys? Yeah, they're going to start going, oh, that's negative. Yeah, I'll commit that. They start popping on like so. And eventually, I build up equilibria. And you know from your studies of equilibria that I've reached equilibrium when the number of copper two plus going off is the same as the number of coppers going into solution. Yeah. So I've reached the rate. The rate of the forward is equal to the rate of the backward. Okay, however, that's one way it could be that actually it builds up a positive charge because it could build up, we're not sure, we haven't done the experiment, that actually when I do this, the first thing that happens, there's my copper, you know my little copper two plus go, yay, there's copper, let's join my buds on the metal there. So they start popping up there. If that's the case, they start initially joining, what kind of charge would go up there? Positive. It would be a positive charge. So sometimes we get negative, sometimes we get a positive charge building up. What do you think that will depend upon? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, in terms of, do you remember back into year nine, do you remember doing the reactivity series of metals? Yes. This actually is gonna to relate to the reactivity series of metals, because that tells you how, how much a metal wants to become an iron. Copper, you know, isn't a very reactive metal. You know it's not a very reactive metal because you have lots of copper things around us and they generally stay as copper. They don't, you know, become um, compounds so much. Uh, they do eventually. Um, however, um, there are far more reactive metals like magnesium, 
which you wouldn't just be able to sit around all the time, they would react. So that's the simplest case. The simplest half cell you can possibly have is a lump of metal in a solution of its ions, like so. However, there are other ones that you can do. What we're going to do is we're going to write a little bit about this and then we're going to draw the other types that we can have. Yeah. Um, anybody have to care? Uh, right, so electron potentials. What we start off by saying a piece of metal in one of its salt solutions. is a half cell. We think about why it's called a half cell a little bit. Um, it's basically an electrode. Could you get different, um, a different metal and a different ion? Uh, well, no, you always keep the, so you'd always use magnesium and magnesium ions. Otherwise you'd have an actual, the reason why is you then just have a chemical reaction happening in the beaker which you don't want, you want to separate them. Yeah. So they do it right, you've got to be able to draw these guys. So um, let's draw, uh, e.g. Oh, that's a very thin beaker. Okay. <laughs> let's do the one that we just done. There's my copper solid. Solutions are always one mole per decimeter cube, copper two plus aqueous. And we always do these experiments at 298 Kelvin. Always measure at 298 Kelvin, as we know, it's 25 degrees, that's our standard. So that's the simplest case, and you can do different metals, uh, so, for example, and the equilibrium that's set up is copper 2 plus aqueous plus 2 electrons is in equilibrium with copper solid. Let's do another one. We could also have magnesium, a bit of magnesium solid. This time I'm going to put them in Mg. 2 plus aqueous. Again, 1 mole. It's really good to just get used to always writing 1 mole per meter cube. And as we've said, we always write the most oxidized on the left hand side. We are always going to add so electrons to something. It's always got to be adding electrons. So it's very, very easy to do this for a metal. You take the solid metal and you stick it in a solution. What about non-metals? This bit has got to be able to conduct electricity. So how am I going to work it with non-metals? Well, the way I do it is I have to use an inert electrode and I use an inert metal, one that doesn't react and I have to use platinum. So for non-metals, you've got to be able to think for non-metals. So for non-metals, um, e.g., let's do a half Cl2 plus an electron in equilibria with Cl minus aqueous. Chlorine we know, of course we know, is a gas. So the way I do it is I get my uh, beaker. In my beaker I have Cl minus mint and a gain of one mole per decimeter cube. But I've got to get my chlorine gas in there. So it's kind of like an upside down test tube. In that I have a platinum wire. So that is a platinum wire and it sticks in there, and in here, I pump, oh no, go away, CL2 gas, and that is a one atmosphere pressure. So 
So it's CL2 gas at one atmosphere pressure. Sorry? CL minus ions, yeah. I've got chlorine gas because that's my state with this one. Chlorine yeah. gas, so the gas fills up this. That's at one atmosphere. And then I've got chlorine ions there. Um, can I just do really quickly for um, mixed ions? So, e.g., if you wanted to measure this, Fe3 plus aqueous plus an electron in equilibrium with Fe2 plus aqueous, this guy, you can't use iron as a metal because if you used iron, you would have all sorts of other equilibria knocking on. So the way you do it is you use platinum electrode and in solution you have Fe2 plus aqueous, one mole per decimeter cubed, and also you have Fe3 plus aqueous at one mole per decimeter cubed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's only when you have a mixed oxidation state. So the platinum doesn't get rid. If I didn't do that, I'd have all sorts of other equilibria knocking around. I'd have Fe2 plus plus two electrons in equilibrium with iron. Fe3 plus plus three electrons in equilibrium with iron. I'd have it all knocking around. So I don't want that happening. So I remove it. So I'm just measuring this one. I just want to see what charge builds up when I have Fe3 plus and Fe2 plus. Because obviously, what can happen is if more, if my ions start converting, if lots of Fe3 plus say, yay, I want to convert into Fe2 plus, I'm going to have electrons removed from here and I'll have a build up of the 